So, uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, as a Mediterranean person, I really sympathize with people that will stand from uh, lunch time uh, to come to a session when it's 2 p.m. So thank you very much for being here. Um, my name is Kim Gill. I work at the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, I work in the technical collaboration team. I will, I will present a bit, oops, uh, I enjoyed technical problems. I will not sit here, uh, it's, it's the, I've never been in a stage doing anything or dancing or less even so speaking, so please bear with me. Also, I'm having the only mic uh, in the room, mobile mic right now, but uh, I will, my intention is to just explain a story for 10-ish minutes, uh, because then I think the most interesting part is from that story or from whatever, whatever I missed, what are the things you are, think are, are more worth discussing. So I'll leave the mic and then we'll use it. Okay. Um, yeah, so I said, uh, I work in the technical collaboration team. Um, this is, our, our work is basically to help developers, both uh, volunteers, uh, professional developers, work with the Wikimedia communities. Um, we have community liaisons that, that uh, well, actually, why not, members of this team uh, that you are in the, in the room, can you please stand up? So we have here uh, Rachel, who was the organizer of the hackathon, so we organize hackathons, for instance. Uh, Andre Clapper, if you ever went to, Bugs sorry, I'm not allowing clapping, I'm, I'm going too fast already. Yeah, so uh, Rachel, we have Andre Clapper, if you were in Bugzilla or you are now in Fabricator, you probably have met Andre at some point. Um, who else? We have Erika Elitre, uh, usually around visual editor uh, topics. We have Nick, also known as Quiddity, um, flow and many MISC uh, topics. Who else? Okay, well, there's more, but uh, not many more. Um, um, okay, and if you want to know more about our team, the information is here in Meta, technical collaboration, easy. Okay, so, um, so basically the intention of, of, this, of, of, of this session uh, is to summarize some of the lessons we have learned after years of observing and being involved in conflict in general and conflict uh, related conflict around uh, products features new stuff configurations technical i mean all the problems that are not technical that surround the technical problems um, what Please don't be misled by the fact that I am the, the foundation and whatever I'm going to say then is for the community. Uh, that story applies equally for, it doesn't matter, uh, it applies equally for, for developers from the foundation, the volunteer developers, uh, volunteer editors, whoever. It's, it's, it's a story for, for the whole movement and I think uh, hopefully all of us uh, will have something to think about. So the, the starting point is, so software development is not an easy it's not easy. I mean, this is why there's so many people working on it, I guess. Uh, and making uh, users happy is not easy. But really, at Wikimedia, it is very, very easy if we look at, you know, statistics. And it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be that, that easy. So we're looking at, at factors. Why, why is it more difficult than needed? And how, how could we just move it to average, regular levels of difficulty, which are already challenging and interesting? So, so there's, there's one point, which is avoiding polarization. Polarization, simplification, stereotypes, pointing the other. Uh, this happens a lot, and actually many times, just like, like couples that don't get along well, they discuss about whatever detail in the house, but actually the problem is not the detail in the house, the problem is something deeper, and, and this happens a lot. So uh, we read a lot of times you know, because the community, or because the foundation, or, you know, editors want, or developers do, uh, and in general, in many, many, many types of us versus them. Uh, there's no time to make a survey just in this room, but actually, the, that picture is, is, things are not as clear cut, actually things are quite mixed, and this is very good. Uh, it's not so clear that oh, I'm a developer, therefore I'm not an editor, or vice versa or I am at the foundation, therefore I'm not a volunteer, et cetera, et cetera. Um, also understanding what's our relationship, and this is a very important point, and, and 
we have heard it many times. Like we have heard, for instance, the foundation, we are paying the foundation, so the foundation should do what we tell them to do. No, that's a customer-provider relationship. This is not what we're doing. Uh, it's, it's not my decision. It's simply not what we're doing. Uh, it's not the, the role we have. This is also not wiki collaboration. Uh, it has many components that are very similar to wiki collaboration, but it's something different, really. It, it, uh, software, you, you can, you can, you can uh, get to a good quality article through a series of steps, each of which renders uh, uh, an article that you can read. With software, that doesn't work like that. So you cannot apply directly those dynamics. And actually, this is not even classic open source. Um, we do have a classic open source setup. Uh, you know, with uh, bug reporting and, and Git reposit code repositories uh, and whatnot. But actually, in a, in a classic open source project, you don't think about something like, oh, I'm speaking now in the name of one of the 800 communities that we have there, and therefore my voice is very important. Because regular open source dynamics are more based on, uh, I am I, I'm contributing, and, and basically, this is a collaboration between individuals. Here we have a very important component, which is that we have individuals and we have an individual collaboration, but we have the communities uh, who bring some individuals, but also who have a voice, a collective voice as well. So the way I want to put it is that we are software partners. And, and I think many problems start to look different when you think yourself as, as, as a software partner as well. Um, we, we need to work together in order to get that software that we need. Working and, and useful and... Another problem is uh, we, we really need to be clear that we need to encourage experimentation. And there's a lot of... Uh, this is another thing that is not explicit many times in discussions, but it's there. Um, I'm, you'll see that in some slides I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a fictional dialogue. So here's an idea, no? Here comes a developer, here's an idea. First response, boom. Uh, no, because A, B, C, D, fundamental reasons why this cannot ever be at Wikimedia. And um, well, actually it's very easy to, to just throw stop energy in Wikimedia and this doesn't make anybody happy and, and actually it's not very useful at the end. And well, as a reminder, we are here because uh, many experiments were made, actually some of them really crazy. Some of them turned out to work out, some of them didn't work, and now we barely remember them. But experiments are, are, are a deep part of, of Wikimedia. It's also about understanding free software development. And this is a very important factor because ultimately what we are doing is developing free software. That's it. You know, when, when you complain about some feature that you don't like, or there's something that when you click here breaks, or whatever it is the problem, uh, ultimately, this is the result of a free software development process. Therefore, um, it, the, the, your participation is more effective when you understand how that works and therefore where you can influence. It's exactly the same. If I want to fix Dutch Wikipedia, uh, I can go maybe one day to Wikimedia L or Meta and say something, but if I really want to fix that, Dutch Wikipedia with something that I think is broken, I have to go to Dutch Wikipedia and then tell them what I think is wrong. And with software development, and it happens uh, the same. So I'm giving the example uh, software teams thinking, no, it's too soon to announce it, and this happens. Uh, the opposite also happens, is that, ooh, uh, this is broken, just call me when it's done. And then, of course, if the, when the discussion happens when it's done, then it's really too late in terms of software development, and then we have huge explosion. So uh, developers need to be familiar with free software development and their Wikimedia expectations and share since the very beginning. But also uh, the, the users uh, need to be open to the idea that it's okay. And it doesn't need to be the entire English Wikipedia going and testing the new feature, but it, it's, it's very healthy when a good portion of, of the editors Actually, they are open to try new things as they come and, and understand that now this is a plan, now this is a prototype, now this is a beta, etc. So collaboration starts in the planning phase. And, and I know planning phases might be really boring or might sound like there's many adjectives really bad for, for you know, that can be associated to planning phases. But actually, most of the important decisions 
or pre-decisions uh, uh, are, being, are being made during the planning phase. Sharing priorities. Um, I'm, I'm, so I'm, again, some sentences that, that might sound familiar to some of you. Uh, this is a solution in search of a problem. Stop wasting donors' money. You should fix something else instead. Um, so actually, strategy, annual plans, quarterly goals, I know all this um, is really, really distant from, from a lot of people, but actually this is what ultimately defines with how much push a team is uh, trying to develop a new feature or a new product, and therefore, uh, Probably if you're disagreeing with a feature, you're also disagreeing with whatever is the priority that is behind that, that, that feature. And actually, those priorities can also be challenged. The annual plan, the strategy, anything can be challenged uh, if, if there's a good reasons for that. So that's also another encouragement. Again, not all the Wikipedia editors need to, not, not all the, I don't know, commons, not, not everybody needs to be involved in strategy if they don't feel interested about this. But it is healthy that communities as a whole have some people that do follow those processes and are able to flag things that don't make any sense from the point of view of, of, the, of the community. And, and on the contrary, things that are missing that say, hey, this is very important for us, should be reflected there. Then also the finding checkpoints. And this is one, one point where our software development cannot be just classic open source development. You cannot ask everybody to be sitting on, on the code review queue, checking patches as they come. You cannot ask everybody to be in Fabricator, just following all the tasks. Um, so basically, an idea is that checkpoints are needed. Uh, projects can be developed in very agile ways, but at some point you have a plan, or at least a draft plan that you want to propose. At some point, you, it's the first day you have something that looks like a design concept. At some point, you have something that is actually a functional prototype that you can click and see what happens, etc. So these check, checkpoints are very important. And I think a, a percentage of the communities would be happy to actually know, hey, now there's a new plan for a new project. Check it out. Give us your feedback. Uh, three months later, hey, look, here there's some mockups. What do you think? Etc. The finding feedback channels. And more sentences. Not in my wiki. Others say, not in Fabricator. And of course, many even say, uh, well, English, yeah. So um, how do we solve this? Well, it's not easy. As we know, communication across uh, Wikimedia is not easy, but can be done. And, and then there's also here some hints at, at you know, agreeing which are those channels. And for instance, taking MediaWiki.org as a place where not only developers are there, but it's a, it's a good place to talk about uh, you know, about talking about software uh, projects in general, and then make good use of interwiki uh, notifications, translatable pages, etc. Because people need to realize that not everything can be discussed in your village spam. Actually, you don't want everything to be discussed in your village spam because there's a lot going on. Okay, so um, focusing on positives and blockers. Um, so we are. By, by default, community discussions circulate around village pumps, RFCs, and basically when there's a discussion, uh, the, the inertia, movement inertia, bring us, bring us to define models of uh, accept, oppose. Actually, from the point of view of a developer, uh, that accept, oppose are not very useful. It's like, okay, I don't know, what do you like, what you don't like? And what you don't like, can we fix it? And what you like, can we still you know, make it more prominent? So I think feedback should, should uh, go more around defining, hey, you know, so these, these, and these are really good things, and, and Wikimedia really needs them. But actually, unless you fix these and these, there's no way that these can run in our wiki in an efficient way. OK, that's, that's the beginning of a different type of discussion, as opposed to you made it, you didn't made it, come back in a year or never. Project information and updates. So we are very conscious about the problem that different teams, different projects communicate in different ways. And it is difficult for us, difficult for me, to actually uh, 
you know, follow what's going on, uh, jumping, you know, jumping from project to project. It's even more difficult, of course, for volunteers with limited time interested in this feature to, in a couple of clicks, uh, go to a page and, in a couple of minutes, get a fair idea of what it does, what's the current status. And I think we can also work, uh, work on, on, on this, improving our documentation so we can offer consistent project pages where it is easy to see what's the last activity going on and, and what, is, what, what can I do now? What is the feedback that you are expecting from me? Another idea that actually, this is, a, this is a, it's an obvious idea when you think of it, but we are not doing this. And I think it would be a solution for many of the problems we have is going back again to the model of uh, village PAMs, RFCs, these are generalist discussions. Everything is being discussed in a long column that actually gets very long. So think of it. If, if the problem is we want to improve the UX, the design of a feature, probably people experienced in design are good people to actually participate there. Uh, I don't know if you know many designers. I know some. The designers I know will not join something that starts with a huge block of text where actual mockups are not being exchanged. Uh, they would, in any case, explain, you know, I think your design doesn't work because, look. So, for instance, it would be good that we would have something like, hey, this is the design checkpoint. If you sit here, you will get to know uh, news about any new project, any new feature that is asking for, for a design review. And we can do this for other different areas, uh, localization, accessibility, et cetera, et cetera. Therefore, not everybody will need to participate in the big general channel. Uh, if you're interested, if you think, I'm, I'm, I'm a designer, I love design, I would like to help Wikimedia with better designs, you sit here, you forget about all the rest. If you want, you can join all the rest. But basically having more specialized, specialized discussions and, and collaboration. This is, I'm, I'm, I'm finishing. Um, Flexible deployment waves. So we are doing this a bit already, but I think we could formalize it better and also we could give more ex clear and explicit options to communities uh, to, to decide things. So, I don't know, like, for instance, before, before jumping here, someone said, will you talk about flow? I said, no, I will not talk about flow because uh, I'm just looking at the patterns. Actually, I will mention one thing about flow. Uh, I happen to be volunteer in Catalan Wikipedia. They love flow. Uh, I happen to be a uh, volunteer and not volunteer in places like MediaWiki.org or Meta, where in MediaWiki.org is depends who you ask, and in Meta is uh, it's Meta. Um, so we literally we literally get for many topics this like someone says, volunteer community all, yeah? uh, please enable X in our wiki, and at the same time you get another community also volunteers etc saying exactly the opposite. But well, actually, the way we release software, we can make happy both and just focus first on the ones willing to receive that software. Uh, the other ones can be relaxed, like, stop doing this, you don't understand anything. No, I mean, we do understand some things. And actually, a portion of the movement uh, is interested on this. So maybe we all have to understand a bit better what is this movement beyond, you know, the corners where we are active. I think we can play a lot more with this. And the last point I want to highlight is making decisions for readers. This is very complex uh, uh, because, you know, like none of us are pure readers, as in only readers. And therefore, we think we know what readers want, but mm, that's not guarantee, uh, I mean, probably not true, statistically speaking. Therefore, our discussions are many times biased, uh, more frequently than not, by our own experiences as non-editors, uh, uh, sorry, as, as, as non-readers only. So again, a typical dialogue, disable this feature for IPs, uh, then developer says what reader wants, and then the other says, no, they want. And that's it, we are, we are stuck there. Actually, uh, I think uh, we are doing a lot better at doing user research. Uh, I think we can improve sharing not just the user research itself, but also the understanding of that user research. So at least we can, we can discuss with a more common understanding of those users. And maybe you can also find an experiment with ways we actually we get a sample of those users directly participating in, in, in decisions. We can also ask them, and we're asking them progressively more. OK, so basically, uh, this was a lot. Uh, and there's more, I'm sure. But 
I think these changes can be done. And the price of not doing these changes is very high. We actually spend, all of us, we spend a lot of time, energy, nerves uh, in discussions around software. And don't get me wrong, there's always going to be discussions about software, but they can be more interesting, more funny, more, con more, constructive, more constructive and more collaborative and bringing better results in shorter time. Okay, so summary for, for wiki communities. Uh, think of it, you are technical contributors. You, you are technical contributors. Uh, you can demand project consistency to developers. Say, hey, you know, it cannot be. I go to this project, I find this organization, I go to the other project, they do something different. Please, can you be at least consistent? That's good. Actually, communities are pretty consistent in terms of values and, and ways of working. Choose your checkpoints. So as, as individual contributors, if design is your thing, or if you care about uh, multilingual, multilingual interfaces, whatever it is your thing, uh, Focus first on, on what is your specialization and find your checkpoint. And if you participate uh, in, in your checkpoint first, then you know, being involved in, in other areas will be a lot easier. And also focus on defining blockers. Uh, there's nothing more difficult to digest than a long piece of feedback mixing 17 things. Two of them is the ID and the board um, and, 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 and how we continue a discussion from that point. So if instead of getting into this type of discussion that we have seen, we really focus on, hey, look, from all the things, I mean, there's many things I don't like, but really, A and B, for me, are blockers. For me, with, with these two elements unsolved, we cannot continue. Actually, conversations are a lot easier to handle when it's clear what is really a blocker, and then the rest, you know, once we fix the blocker, we can continue in discussion. Summary for development teams. You are community members. Yes, you are community members, just uh, as in full right. Uh, you can demand early involvement. Um, and, and also, with, I think you're fully entitled to, to demand that. Especially, the stronger the opinions, the stronger you should be able to demand early involvement. Uh, use checkpoints consistently. I think for, you know, it would be great if then all the development teams would agree, we do have a design checkpoint, and it's there. That would be very useful for everybody to discuss design decisions. And listen to blockers carefully. Uh, I think one lesson that we keep learning and sometimes forgetting is we do get early signs of things that some volunteers say, nah, I don't think this is working out, and then we are so convinced, they say, yes, yes, it will, it will. you'll see, you'll see, no worries. Six months later, still the problem hasn't been unsolved, and now the problem is very real. So pay attention to those blocks. So that was my pitch. Um, thank you. I don't even know uh, what time is it. Uh, okay. So um, any questions, comments? Hi, a great outline. Um, wish I'd had that a few years ago. But um, yeah, I wanted to say I heard an interesting point from Erica Latrena yesterday, which was that sometimes it's, it's too broad to say, just tell me the positives and the blockers. And sometimes you might want to ask very specific questions too. But I'm not sure how to define those questions. Yeah, so it took, me, it took me 23 minutes to explain this. I have more to explain, and that would be one thing, but... If, if the blockers and positives are not clear, then the rest of the conversation is kind of polluted already. So I, I personally think it's okay. Let's focus really on what, what really is stopping something. Because when it's in movement, then the rest, you know, oh, there's many other things to discuss. Uh, but I think it's easier to see, understand clearly for the development team, to understand clearly what is a no-go according to someone. Okay, I have a question. Uh, I like it very much the presentation. I think it's a useful tool for collaboration. Uh, the thing I was wondering about while I was uh, listening to you is uh, how much do you ask for feedback to different level types of users? That is, users which are uh, power editors, which have many edits, and those who are uh, just starting. I would say not enough. We 
I mean, first of all, we cannot be asking always everybody because we could overwhelm everybody quickly and actually we have a risk of overwhelming. But it is very difficult to communicate through the movement. It takes a lot of effort and it is, uh, I, think, I think we also are victims of this inertia of, well, there's Fabricator, there's some pages in MediaWiki.org, then there's a collection of village pumps where we, you know, through whatever reasons, we have a good communication, but anything beyond those points starts to be fuzzy, also for the young communities. I mean, uh, how do Catalan Wikipedia communicate with new editors? Uh, not easy. So, but at least I think there's a concern, it, uh, it's, it's a conscious concern at least. And I, I, we are willing, well, it's not that we are willing to improve. I think if we look now, 12 months ago, 24 months ago, I think we are improving, but not enough, if you ask me now. Thank you. Um, is it me who is deciding who I saw? <laughs> I think it would be very improving if you could make, uh, if the developers could make uh, little less steps. I think the, the greatest problem is the, the uh, most users are not interested in visiting beta pages and uh, beta systems. And so when uh, after two years or so the software is done and it's you get a huge block and then everybody complains. Um, but if you would make smaller steps and would say, Publish after and after on the live system, you, the people could say could see where it happened and could be, get um, give feedback much earlier. I could say yes, you're right, and in part you're right. But this is when agreeing with the community is almost impossible. So you will have people who will say what you said. You will have find people who will say. Don't deploy this, don't mix my workflow before this is completely finished. Let me a beta or an opt-out or something somewhere else. And they are also right. So again, it's, it's, it's complicated. One good idea that I heard actually, and this was in, in Wikicon uh, Germany in Dresden, is that it would be useful if we would have the possibility to use uh, Wikipedia Unstable, uh, you know, where all the features will be deployed there and I can sign in and, and actually, you know, Probably that's a crazy idea for some reasons, but I think it's something worth exploring. So at least then there would be the, some users would prefer to continue opting in to beta features or something. But someone could just decide to run Wikipedia Unstable, so just like some people decide to run on Debian Unstable. Uh, so I would just uh, want to make two comments about um, what the thing that you said, asking about the smaller things. Um, and I think... Uh, the, the big point to take away from that is that sometimes we do not recognize what the big things are. So you should never uh, assume that something is small and just ignore it for that reason. You should make sure that you understand what is being asked and um, only then you can decide whether or not something is big or small. And only then you can do this filtering and focusing on the big things. I think that's, that's a, a sort of an interesting um, thing that we should look more at because people come from different viewpoints so it's sometimes uh, different, uh, difficult to uh, from your viewpoint decide whether something is uh, small or big without just taking that one extra look at it and the other thing um, quick please quick yes and the other thing was um, you said about um, do, do we ask at, at different levels and I, I, I was just realizing that of course we make it as editors we make it very difficult to actually um, tell people who we are within the, Wikimedia, within the Wikimedia projects. We do not actually show much of the type of editor that we are towards other editors. We are very much um, private and isolated about it, I would say. So I have to cut because uh, we need to be respectful to the next speaker. I love to discuss all these topics. I'm around. I continue being around after Wikimedia. There's many channels to, to reach me, reach this team. Uh, actually, we are working on the, we're trying to summarize all these good lessons in this technical collaboration guideline, which is a wiki page, so you understand the things, you know, can, can evolve and can improve. So if you're interested in those discussions, please uh, join us uh, there in the technical collaboration guideline. Thank you very much.